Lexington police arrest a man they say killed a woman, then dismembered her body. Tonight, we're learning new details about the suspect, the victim, and their relationship. What friends and family are telling us about three young people police say died in a crash in Boyle County this morning. He said, oh, I don't care about money, honey. I just care about your heart. A warning tonight about romance scams, how to keep someone online from stealing your heart and your money. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. A gruesome crime in a Lexington neighborhood. Investigators say a man killed a woman, dismembered her body, and left it in dumpsters. Police later arrested 24-year-old Patrick Jones. He's facing multiple charges, including murder. The coroner has identified the victim as 20-year-old Haley Bourgeois. Police say they found her body in different scenes along Malibu Drive. Officer Don flew over the crime scene in Sky First this afternoon. We have top story team coverage tonight, beginning with Caitlin Sentner. Caitlin? This scene out here this morning was absolutely horrific. We've been out here all day. It's certainly not news any family, friends, or neighbors wanted to wake up to. And this afternoon, we know the victim as 20 year old Haley Bourgeois. Many shocked Thursday morning after their homes are surrounded by Lexington police and caution tape. I never thought I would ever see something like this. Police were called to Malibu Drive for suspicious activity, but what they found was much more, leaving neighbors confused. Uh, you can't go in the back. You can't, can you go in the building? You can go in your building. You can go in this way. Go, you can go this way, but you can't go in the, uh, the back area. They got locked off. In fact, three different areas were blocked off. Brookhaven Apartments, Malibu Manor, and a nearby business complex. Police were searching dumpsters in the area, and what they found was disturbing. For Fayette County Coroner Gary Ginn, the words were hard to find. Well, it's horrible to uh, take another person's life, but then when you mutilate an individual after you've done that, um, you know, I don't know what kind of person this is that uh, has that type of personality that could do that. Lexington police arrested 24-year-old Patrick Jones and charged him with murder, tampering, and abuse of a corpse. Jones, they say, lived nearby. It's going to be all right, though. We're a strong community. We're just pull it together. Jones was arrested at 147 Malibu Drive. That's the address for Brookhaven Apartments behind me here. We talked to the coroner this afternoon. He said an autopsy should happen tomorrow morning. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. Now, we have been digging into Patrick Jones's past, and court records reveal more details about the relationship he had with the victim. Monique Blair is live now with what she's been able to find. She continues our top story team coverage. Monique? Well, Amber, after doing some digging here at the Fayette County Courthouse, I have learned that Patrick Ryan Jones and Haley Bourgeois shared at least one child together. I have also learned that, at least according to court records, they had a rocky relationship. Court documents show 24 year old Patrick Ryan Jones and 20 year old Haley Bourgeois each filed emergency protective orders against each other last September. Jones filed one against Bourgeois first. Then 13 days later, Bourgeois filed one against Jones. The records cite domestic and interpersonal violence as the reason behind the protective orders. Each dismissed their EPOs against each other less than two months later in October. Court documents also show in May 2015, Jones was charged with two felonies and four misdemeanors on the same day. Among those charges were theft of $10,000 or more and carrying a concealed deadly weapon. District Court would not give us the details behind those charges, saying they were confidential. Now, we did ask if Jones would, Jones would like to speak to us from jail, but he declined our request. Reporting live in Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. We want you to keep checking WKYT.com for updates on this murder investigation. Tonight, friends and family are remembering three young people who died in a fiery crash in Boyle County early this morning. Prayer vigil for the victims is underway right now at the crash site at Highway 33 in Faulkner Lane. This is a live look at what's happening right there in Boyle County. Hillary Thornton tells us what she's learned about the three victims. The early morning crash claiming three lives, Matt Darlin and Brianna Kaufman, both 21 years old, as well as 17-year-old Jacob Frick. I shouldn't be talking about him. I should be talking to him. 
Amy Trigg remembering her son Jacob for his fun-loving personality. He just graduated high school. He didn't have one enemy. Everybody was his friend. Cowboy boots, big belt buckles, and camo. And his plans to work hard and buy his own place by the lake. He said, Dad, I'm going to ask you a question. When I turn 18, could you get me a job where you work at? Police say the car was driving down Faulkner Lane, and for some reason, when it reached the end of the roadway, the driver did not stop or make a turn for Highway 33, causing the car to leave the roadway, slamming into a stone pillar. Investigators believe Darlin was behind the wheel. There is one survivor, 20 year old Trevor Thompson, who was rushed to UK hospital after a passerby pulled him away from the car. Just a few hours after the crash, family members visiting the site. Felt like I had to go there because that was the last place my son was. Trigg says her son was always making others smile and she knows what he would tell her now. He'd say he was sorry. Sorry he didn't come home. Sorry he made me worry. In Boyle County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. State police say it could take weeks to determine what caused the driver's car to run off that road. They say the victims were all from Mercer County. The wife of a former state lawmaker is recovering in France tonight after suffering a serious head injury. Bob Babbage tells us his wife is in a medically induced coma in a hospital near the town of Grenoble. He says she was injured in an accident during a cycling event. Laura Babbage is an avid cyclist. Her husband served as state auditor and secretary of state. Babbage tells us that he is now on his way to France to be with his wife. A stretch of steamy weather continues across the bluegrass, and it looks like our chances for storms will be increasing. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early check of your forecast. Yeah, starting to get in on some cloud cover increasing as well out there. We've been talking about watching the northern, northwestern skylines for the possibility of some clouds to filter in and being pushed by some thunderstorms. Live look. Beyond the dome, you are noticing some of those clouds that are showing up on the northern horizon, working their way on in from north to south as of now. And those clouds are helping to keep those temperatures down again today, way under what computer models suggested or your weather apps would say uh, the temperatures would be today. Only upper 80s to around 90 into many areas. Throw the humidity into the mix, and it only boosts that temperature up a degree or two into central and eastern Kentucky. So, moral of the story today: the humidity was largely a no-show in. In terms of being way, way up there. That'll change over the next few days, but it also may mean a better shot for some thunderstorms. Defender Radar Network picking up on a broken band of thunderstorms now from Detroit back toward Indianapolis that is dropping its way toward the south and southeast. Here's that future hour by hour radar, and yeah, it does get some of that action into northern Kentucky before weakening it out, weakening it out in the overnight hours. Early tomorrow morning, can be a little patchy fog out there. Steamy temperatures roll on, but thunderstorms are going to increase. And just ahead, we'll show you how the potential is there for some of those stronger storms to dump a lot of rain over the next week. It's more common than you might believe. Scammers trolling online dating sites waiting to steal hearts. Then they drag the victims into a money laundering scheme. One woman sat down with our investigative reporter Miranda Combs to explain how this romance scam took over her life as WKYT Scam Week continues. Looking for love in all the right places? The scam is so common, the Federal Communications Commission put out a warning, a national scam. He's thoughtful and says he can't live without you. But it doesn't feel common when it's you. He made me feel comfortable. She's hiding in shadows, much like the person she fell in love with last year. He's talking to me every day. He's calling me at night at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning and he's waking me up. So I don't have much sleep. You're invested. I'm invested. The relationship started on ChristianMingle.com. She met a man who said he was from North Carolina, a self employed petroleum driller. The talks moved fast from the dating site to daily phone calls and text messages. Everyday conversations about everything. You know, like just like when you're getting to know somebody. She says the first red flag came when he asked if she had a retirement account. Uh, I said, I don't have any money, you know. And he said, oh, I don't care about money, honey. I just care about your heart. But the loving conversation shifted to work. His company needed money, and she had to get it to him. This is breaking. This is breaking. He needs money for this. He needs money for that. She found herself spending her evenings going from one Western Union to another, moving money. 
If I wasn't moving fast enough, he was yelling at me. What are you doing? What's taking so long? It makes me sound like an idiot. Yeah, I know. By now, she spent months and money trying to make him happy. A lot of times he'd call me and he'd be screaming at me. And excuse me, he'd be screaming at me. <coughs> and there'd be a lot of noise in the background. And as she moved from MoneyGrams and bank accounts, her bank was watching. We do a lot of training too on this on this particular here at the credit union to pick up on things like that. Jamie Akers with Commonwealth Credit Union says just in the past six months they've had 15 similar cases at their bank alone, equaling more than $100,000. That's not us losing the money, that's actual members losing the money. She calls them romance scams. Most of the scammers are out of England or South Africa. We've had them anywhere from six months to two years. And they'll talk to them to get their trust. I love you, I understand you, I want to meet you, but they keep putting them off being to meet them because they said something else come up. I never actually physically met him. I never actually saw him. Her relationship went on for nine months. They were saying that he was a scammer and they would tell me here what what's going to happen next, and it always did. These people are in love, and when they are so deep in love, it's hard to change someone's mind. But eventually, she realized the money she lost was a sign there was no love. They warned me. Yeah, they told me over and over again. Luckily, they never gave up, and they never stopped telling me the same thing over and over again, because it just wouldn't register because I was clinging to him. She got out of it, but not before losing a lot of money. Acres with the credit union says once a victim is aware that it is a scam, if they continue to participate in the scam, they could get in trouble with the law for being an accomplice. Most of the scammers, Acres says, are from England or South America. So sad. Mm -hmm. Amazing the control he had over her. Now, these are not short relationships, are they? You heard Acres say anywhere from six months to two years they've seen, and like they said, they never even met. Well, very brave mm. for her to speak out and mm -hmm. try to warn others. Absolutely. Miranda, thank you. Mm -hmm. A police chase in Laurel County took an unusual turn. Who police say the suspect had with him next. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Clouds are beginning to stream in to part to the region. That is a sign of a pattern that is going to try to get stormy on us yet again. And that may start sooner rather than later. Look at our nine live sky cams out there. And we can show you what all is going on across the region. Uh, Frankfurt, Lexington, Florence, more in the way of some clouds. Starting to see a few of those showing up on the Moorhead cam as well. Temperatures today. Upper 80s to around 90 into most areas again. It, we're kind of putting a lid on just how hot those numbers can get. Wet ground, green grass, and some clouds moving in, and the threat for some thunderstorms over the next few days. That is a not a recipe for a big heat wave across the bluegrass state by any stretch of the imagination. Indianapolis to Covington. Thunderstorms are beginning to increase, and you see this complex of storms, clouds that are blowing off of that into the bluegrass state now. So your evening skyline is likely to cloud over fairly quickly, and then we've got to be on guard for some of those storms that are around Indianapolis over toward Dayton to try to get into parts of the area. Tomorrow, low 90s are a possibility. A possibility. I'm not sold on tomorrow just being a blazing hot day. We haven't been sold on it all week. Show you why in just a second. Next several days, look at the rain chances that begin to increase. And over the next week, the computer models we've been looking at are upping the ante, if you will, for some additional thunderstorms that can put down some heavy rain. So this model, snapshot in time, doesn't include thunderstorms, by the way, that can drop an inch or two in just no time. But that has a general couple of inches over the next seven days across the bluegrass state. This evening, this model missing the thunderstorm complex that is north of Cincinnati. It is picking up on, as are most models now, looking at new data coming in tomorrow afternoon, and all of them agree that into the afternoon tomorrow, thunderstorms are going to be around here. If that is the case, look at how cool the numbers are. 
We'll find out tomorrow, but right now, thunderstorms may end up stealing the show tomorrow afternoon. We go into the day on Saturday, and it is likely to be more of the same as well. Uh, upper 60s, low 70s to start, some clouds, and the potential for a thunderstorm or two to go up. And it's one of those patterns that will keep around into the day on Sunday as well. With outside, this is likely too warm on the temperatures, with showers and thunderstorms that will go up into the afternoon. Models are just guidance. And... Low 90s tomorrow. Check back with me tonight at 11. We'll see what I do with that number. I may knock that down a few degrees uh, looking at the latest data coming in for tomorrow. We've been the coolest of the bunch for this heat wave, and so far it is not showing up. We go into the weekend, a few thunderstorms that will be around, and those storm chances will ramp it up a notch again next week. The theme of the summer is thunderstorm action, obviously, guys. This is a fourth straight summer where we've had more thunderstorms than normal around here. Mm -hmm. People cannot say that they were not warned. You've been right. talking about this yeah. really for weeks. We have been, and I think the storm chances over the next week. I'll be surprised if a week from now, if we haven't had a cloudburst or mm -hmm. two, cause some issues. All right. Thanks, Chris. You bet. We're starting to talk a lot about football these days. Mark Stoops continuing the talking season. Uh, this noon, it was Lexington Rotary. Stoops said he's not going anywhere. And quarterback Matty Mock has made the move from Missouri to EKU. One year of eligibility left. He's eager to show what he can do. That's next in sports. Mark Stoops making his preseason appearance before Lexington Rotary, and as always, he was given a warm welcome. Stoops told the Rotarians how excited he is about the new training facility. He and his players toured it for the first time this morning. As for the upcoming season in the future, Stoops said he is confident. Believe me, I'm not going anywhere. We feel very confident with where we're going. It's not easy to, to build uh, in this league, but we are on the right track. We're gonna stay the course. Sure, there's a few things you wish you could do over. There's always some plays. You know, anybody that says that, that they wouldn't do that is a liar. You know, in hindsight, if I could do a few things over, I would. It's a stupid call, coach. Do it over, right? I wouldn't, you know, but uh, there's always a few things. But uh, by and large, I'm very proud of where, where, we're, where we're going. We are 44 days and counting until UK opens this season against Southern Miss. Tonight, the number 44, worn by defensive back Mike Ziganos and punter Tim Maste. 44 also is the number of pass attempts by Andre Woodson in Kentucky's 40-34 upset win over Louisville in 2007. One of those completions to C.V. Johnson for the game winner. To see the entire countdown, just click on WKYT.com. And as you probably know, football schedules are made out years in advance. Today it was announced Toledo will be the home opener for the Wildcats in 2019, three years down the road. UK and Toledo have never met on the gridiron. The game will take place August 31st, 2019. Kentucky will go on the road to Eastern Michigan in game two of that season. Former Missouri quarterback Matty Mock is now down at EKU, and today he talked about the issues that led him to Richmond. Mock said he made some mistakes at Missouri, which led him to being dismissed from the team. But he was able to get his degree before he left, and with one year of eligibility left, Mock says he's out to prove to people he's not a troublemaker. Coming here is it's not necessarily, you're not going down. I mean, it's still Division I. Yeah, it's a smaller school, but um, there's less attention. You know, it gives me some time to, to, to make sure I'm, I'm still up on my feet and I'm strong, and uh, just to, to let people back off of me and, and fly under the radar for a little bit and and then when they see some success start to come along you know then they can jump back on board and colonels will open the season up at purdue sam amber back to you thank you rob final check of your first alert forecast is next then on the cbs evening news it's donald trump's big night at the republican national convention what political analysts say he needs to accomplish in his speech
Whether you're there in Moorhead or you're here in Lexington, uh -huh. it's just plain hot. It is. A lot of steam out there. Upper 80s to around 90. And we're watching some thunderstorms that are to our north, dropping toward northern Kentucky from the Indianapolis area. We'll keep an eye on those. But look at all the clouds that are coming into town right now. Should make for a, a very nice sunset for some folks. For the rest of us, we're going to cloud over quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. Live coverage of the Republican National Convention coming up tonight here on CBS. We will see you later tonight.